Hi, this is Simon. Today I'm going to show you how to swap the receiver of the Torum 110 Bind and Fly for a Free Sky receiver, and I'll also add an OSD to it. But these two tasks are not really related, so it's totally fine if you just want to do either one of them. I do have a DSM radio for the inductrix, but I use Free Sky for all my other quads. It doesn't really make sense that I need to carry two radios when I go fly outdoor. I'll use the Free Sky XM Plus for this project. This receiver is amazing. It's not expensive, it's very small and super lightweight, and the range is good. I never see any signal problem with it. I start by removing the two screws that hold the canopy. And then the four screws that hold the ESC and the fret controller board. Unplug the cable connected to the video transmitter. And then the two cables to the radio receiver. Let's talk about weight a little bit. The stock receiver weighs about 3 grams. And the Free Sky XM Plus is about 1.5 grams. The OSD I'm adding is also 1.5 grams, so we are not really adding too much weight here. If you look closer at the flight controller, you see the unused UR2 port is exposed right next to the power cable. We are going to use this for the OSD. We will also use the two pads on the left for the ground and 5 volts. We will use the original DSM port for the Free Sky receiver. You might question this because the DSM protocol is known to have the 3.3 volts logic level, and the DSM port may not be able to take the Free Sky signal. Like what you see right here, for the DSM signal, bit 0 is represented by 0 volts, and bit 1 is represented by 3.3 volts. The good news is that unlike some of the other Free Sky receivers, the XM Plus is 3.3 volts friendly. You can see the signal is still inverted, but it's not going to harm any 3.3 volts port. And since the F3 processor has built in inverter for the serial port, we don't need any additional hardware as long as we configure it correctly in beta flight. Now we start by removing one of the receiver cable connectors. Use a wire stripper to remove a little bit insulation. And then thin the wires. Put the wires through the soldering holes. Black is ground, red is 5 volt, gray is signal. It should look exactly like this. Now before installing the OSD, I would highly recommend you to find out the power consumption of it. Some of the sellers like Banggood, they sell really crappy minimum OSD that can draw as much as 500 milliamps, and they get really hot that you can barely touch it. I always buy minimum OSD from ready to fly quartz, and most of them draw less than 100 milliamps, which is fantastic. To install the OSD, we start by cutting a yellow wire and a black wire in the middle of the cable. Do not cut the red wire. Next, we need to connect the two wires from the camera side to the video input pads on the OSD, and then the other two wires from the connector side to the video out pads. But these wires are just too short right now, we need to somehow extend them. I prepare four wires which are roughly about one and a half inches long and then solder them to the original wires. And of course, we need to heat shrink the wires. And after soldering the extended wires, it should look something like this. Next, I use some 3 inches long wire to connect to the pads I talked about earlier in the video. I also put some hot glue on the solder joint to protect them. Now it's time to put the flight controller and the camera back in place. I run the OSD wires underneath the top plate and they come up through the opening in the middle. There's a tiny 2 pin connector from the ESC board and it's for battery voltage sensor. We need to connect it to the OSD because the flight controller doesn't have any battery sensor.
Then we connect the remaining four wires to the OSD. Remember AUX from the FC goes to TX on the OSD and TX from the FC goes to RX on the OSD. Before I can mount the receiver, the little tab at the bottom gets in the way and I need to remove it. And then I just double side tape the receiver. And then we do the same thing for the OSD. Also, don't forget to plug in the receiver cable back to the FC. And finally, I use some tape to secure the wires to make sure they won't wobble too much. Now the hardware part is done. We go to Betafly, enable MSP for UR2, and then in the configuration tab, change the receiver to SBUS, and basically that's it. So we are all set here. You can now use your Teneris and you also have OSD. I do have quite a few micro quads and this one is by far the best. I really love it. Alright, I think that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed this video. Take care.